It's called the progressive era, which is uh, a nice term. Uh, I think people who, uh, who want to socialize America, who want to bring us into total, total government, love to call themselves progressives. I don't think there's anything progressive about it. Right? So in 1913, at the beginning of the so-called progressive era, and it was uh, called that by uh, the people who were involved in it, the Wilson administration, and his guru, Edward Mandel House, who, who wrote a book saying he was working for socialism as dreamed of by Karl Marx. He actually said that in his own book. And he was the greatest influence on Woodrow Wilson for the entire uh, Wil Wilson administration. Uh, a bad man, in my view. So uh, here we are in the so-called progressive era. I would not call it progressive. I'd call it regressive. Uh, the Federal Reserve came into existence in 1913 as a result of a secret compact put together by seven men at a place called Jekyll Island in Georgia in 1910. They planned to do to our country what has already been done, had already been done to several countries in Europe. And so the uh, Federal Reserve was begun. Uh, a lot of people would think it's a uh, government agency. No, no, the Federal Reserve is a privately owned agency. It's not a government. Interesting, you go down to Washington and you look in the telephone directory there and you see all the blue pages for all the government agencies. Federal Reserve is not there, right? The Federal Reserve is private, all right? So um, what is the Federal Reserve's uh, ability? What, what are its powers? Oh, its powers are to create booms and busts. Its powers are to flood the country with currency. The head of the Federal Reserve will go and testify before a congressional committee, and he usually dances around all kinds of things, and they say he's wonderful, as they did with Alan Greenspan for so many years. But the Federal Reserve arrived at a time when the country was on a gold standard. Uh, you could exchange your paper money for precious metal. Uh, and so the first Federal Reserve notes that came out right away also were redeemable in gold. They had to compete side by side. And so Federal Reserve note, U.S. Treasury note, the people of the country said, well, one's as good as the other, fine. President Roosevelt took us off the gold standard in 1933. You couldn't own gold anymore. And so gold certificates were of no value as far as gold is concerned, but we still had silver. So silver certificates became important. Well. The Federal Reserve was competing side by side with those as well, the U.S. Treasury notes, until uh, the Lyndon Johnson and uh, Richard Nixon administrations that took us off all precious metal backed currency. So now we have Federal Reserve notes. That's what you carry in your pocket, what I carry in mine and the ladies carry in their purses. Federal Reserve notes, right? Uh, redeemable in what? Redeemable in nothing. Now, the amount of them is decided by the Federal Reserve. So you flood the country with Federal Reserve notes, what happens? All Federal Reserve notes become less valuable. Same with shoes. If you flooded the country with shoes, all shoes would become less valuable. And uh, basketballs or whatever. And that's what, that's what inflation is. But we get the lying business about inflation is rising prices. No, no, no. The r r inflation causes rising prices. If you believe inflation is rising prices, I always say, you'll believe wet streets cause rain. No, no, wet streets don't cause rain. So the Federal Reserve is the engine of inflation. So in 1913, the dollar was worth 100 pennies. The dollar today is worth less than four pennies. Thank you, Federal Reserve. Right? And there are people who call this the progressive era. You know? So why is, uh, why is it that everything is costing more? Why are prices rising? Because they're flooding the country with more dollars. So they want to call it the progressive era? No, no. It's the regressive era. In 1917, as I uh, mentioned, uh, was the year not only the creation of the Federal Reserve, but the uh, formal amending of the Constitution of the United States for an income tax. And uh, the income tax bill, as it was originally presented, there were some people who say, well, let's put a limit on it, only 5%. And others said, no, don't put the limit of 5% on it because they'll go to 5%. So they didn't put any limit on it. Where is it today? <laughs> Everybody knows it's more than 5%, right? So here we have the federal government taxing the wealth of the American people, the productivity of the American people, 
And uh, as a result, uh, it is not the progressive era, it's the regressive era. If the Constitution of the United States were fully enforced as it exists today, there would be no need for an income tax, right? There are other ways the federal government can uh, get its revenue, uh, constitutional ways, right? Now, the other thing that happened in 1913 was uh, a change in the Constitution to force the states to have direct election for their senators. Up until that time, the senators were appointed by the state legislature. Okay? The people didn't vote for the Senate. And the Senate was to be the voice of the states, and the House of Representatives was to be the voice of the people. Okay? So uh, what you had was the uh, Senate carefully guarding the state's rights. And when you say states' rights, immediately people want to jump and say, oh, that, that brings up uh, 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 memories of, uh, of, of the wrong kind of thing. Well, the states created the federal government, not the other way around. Right? The states should be supreme. The states said we want a federal government for limited purposes, mostly for national defense and a few housekeeping type matters. Right? So states' rights are important. And the wisdom of the Founding Fathers was to have the states compete with each other to be the best state. Each state could do something stupid, and, and it would pretty soon be shown to be stupid because the other state didn't. And the people were leaving and going to the other state because of the stupidity. So competition amongst the states produced good government at state level. And the Senate, being the guardian of the state's rights in the federal government, was uh, helping to keep that in, in, in place. We still have some states that don't have a sales tax or an income tax or one or the other. There's one state that has neither. Uh, most people think of Alaska. No, it's New Hampshire. No state sales tax, no state income tax. And they're being burdened by federal rules that say you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to raise the money to do it. So New Hampshire's burdened and there's a cry now to have, we gotta have it, we gotta have it. I don't know what'll happen, but uh, I don't wanna see it happen. Nevertheless, uh, we get back to, uh, are we in the progressive era? No, no, we're in the regressive era. And what I would like to see is a couple of amendments removed from the Constitution by another amendment, which was done one time. Then one time there was prohibition, uh, an amendment to the Constitution, and then a couple of years later there was a reversal and they amended the Constitution to get rid of the First Amendment. Well, I'd like to see the income tax repealed, and I'd like to see the uh, uh, Senate go back to being chosen by the state's legislatures in order to guard the state's rights of each individual state.